Satish, uh, thank you for coming in today. You have just a wonderful career and professional life, a contribution and excellence and success. And as a result, uh, we're here today and, and you're going to share some of our uh, some of your insights. So thank you for coming in. Thanks a lot, Stephen, for having me here. It's an honor to be speaking to you and uh, your audience. So Satish, you know, as I mentioned uh, in the introduction, you're a pioneer in many different areas like an IoT and AI and so on, and a member of the MIT Auto IT uh, Lab and task forces involved in IoT. And of course, you're, you're a senior executive, a chief executive at an Infosys company, and I just, it goes on and on, right? But my audience, which really is quite mixed, but I do have a lot of CEOs in the audience and uh, um, chief innovation officers and things like that and board members, but I also have young people in the audience. So it's sort of this abiding question amongst my audience is like, you have this marvelous career and it's still continuing. So what were maybe two or three inflection points that created this wonderful person you are today? And it could have been when you were like five years old or it could have been when, you know, when you're in school or um, uh, career inflection points, but you know, what are those things that really propelled you or got to where you're today? Well, uh, thanks for providing the platform to give a brief into this. In fact, maybe that gets me set thinking of some of my young days, which probably I've not done in, in some time, Stephen. Uh, see, I think uh, maybe it's uh, a little bit of a mix of where I grew and and the colleges that I went through and the kind of mentors that I met along the way, I think all of them have contributed to this uh, in different ways, uh, be it in India or in the US. I studied in India first and then came to the US and now I'm back in India. Um, but but I think, you know, generally speaking, um, I've been very uh, curious about new things, that curiosity continues to uh, be there. So I'm very eager to know new things and, uh, and, and how, how do things really work, you know, and whether it is technology or systems or processes or companies, it just doesn't matter. It's about just curiosity, wanting to find out how does it happen. So I think that's one thing that I believe um, has helped me stay active, involved, engaged, and learning. Uh, that's one. And second thing is uh, being very open to change. Uh, you know, I think these are the two fundamental things that I believe has kept me going. And because, you know, there've been, you spoke about pivotal moments and there are quite a few and all of them have come with major changes. And I'm sure this is nothing unique to me. It is it's common across the board, I'm sure, to all the people that you speak to. But these are the two main things. But what aids this is really opportunities that come across and also having great mentors around you and advisors around you. I think these are the people who really, you know, make you believe things that you may not be believing in, you know, especially in your early part of your career. Uh, I think the people who I was uh, surrounded by believed more in me than I, I think I did in my early part of the career. So I think it mattered a lot. Uh, and so, so as much as I, um, you know, would like to talk about some attributes that I have. I think a lot has to do with the people around me who shaped my journey along the way. Yeah, I mean, I understand all of these elements. I, and I, and as you mentioned, it's a common feature amongst uh, many uh, really successful people. These, you know, curiosity, uh, you got this diversity of education, uh, this ability to, you know, act on on some of these things, you know, great mentors and so on. So, uh, but you're a pioneer in the field of IoT and AI. How did that happen? Like, what what allowed you to become this uh, great force in uh, interoperability standards, in IoT, and things like that, and and being affiliated at, with the MIT Auto ID Lab? Uh, you know, so can you discuss that journey or narrative? Sure. Um, see, I, I you know I was in a supply chain slash, you know, industrial services company. It was called, it's called Brambles Limited. And, you know, they owned over 500 million different assets and they used to move those assets around the world. And 
It's a very capital intensive business. You know, it continues to be even today. It exists a very successful business. Um, now they were, you know, uh, thinking of figuring out how do we also become an information uh, management company, if you will. You know, and these are, I'm talking about 98, 99. You know, saying, you know, we own so many assets and all these are moving around the world. And and so how do we really transform this, this supply chain com company into an information management company um, and, and provide information services to some of the partners that and customers that uh, they service? And, and that put me into... Uh, that gave me a tremendous opportunity and a platform for me to figure out, uh, you know, how do we make these assets intelligent? You know, uh, now no, we're not now talking about assets that just carry products, but now it, it's it's carrying information and disseminating information, very relevant information, right? So all of a sudden there is a pivot in thinking, and uh, so that led me down the journey of trying to figure out what kind of technologies. Uh, we're there out in the world at that time, and talking 99, that could help us make the sleep. And, uh, and and there was only one, and and that was the, it's still, even that was in its early stage called RFID, radio frequency identification. Uh, so, and that had its own set of challenges and issues and deploying that kind of technology on various kinds of uh, surfaces, you know, whether it's wood or metal and water and moisture, all kinds of things impacted how RFID really transmitted the waves and how far it could go and so on and so forth. So, the, so, so I, I straight away got into understanding a technology in its very nascent stage and trying to figure out how do we improve it, all right? And knowing very well, um, we needed something much, much more bigger because one was only not only about identifying a technology that could uh, give you signals, but we're talking about 500, 600 million assets sending beeps and information uh, multiple times a day that's moving through the network. Now, all of a sudden it starts, you know, you can think of everything from the early, uh, you know, databases to, uh, to the networks that existed at that time and how do you communicate. So everything in the enterprise stack, including how partners communicated, came into play. And it, so that got me really moving in uh, into the space. And uh, I was investigating various uh, uh, various possibilities. And that led me to MIT. Um, because, you know, in fact, actually, I first landed in Princeton to figure out, you know, if there was any technology breakthroughs that they were seeing in the horizon that could help solve this problem. And then I, I was pointed out that, you know, and again, this was early internet days, right? So... You know, they said, you know, why don't you go to MIT? Because we all actually had a couple of people come and ask the same question. Maybe MIT may have some answers. So I actually landed in MIT, and uh, and 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 uh, it 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 was it was interesting. Even Procter and Gamble was trying to solve the same problem. Philip Morris was trying to say solve the same similar problem. I would say not same, but very similar. But the technology, the implications of technology were very similar, while the applications were slightly different. So we were kind of going after something similar. So that brought some like-minded people together, and uh, and 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 that was really the the genesis of uh, I would say the early days of thinking of what we today know as know as I IoT, um, and it later was named by the person who had come from uh, Procter and Gamble into uh, the group was the one who actually named IoT. He coined the word IoT. And it stuck, <laughs> and um, so, so so you know, uh, and and uh, so 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 that's how you know I got into this whole IoT space, and and it was as intriguing as possible. You know, I you know the possibilities were unlimited at that time. You know, we we were dreaming of you know smart medical cabinets which could uh, really order drugs for people and can be refurbished and replenished by pharmacies and and actually can send signals to old age people on when to take, if they didn't take, send alarms to doctors. You know, we were thinking of all kinds of stuff, including uh, ways to uh, correct uh, and fix uh, automotive problems on highways. And so what started as tracking all these assets 
very quickly elevated into how can we connect everything to everything. Now, it was no more about a track and trace problem, which is what we all started with. But very quickly, we pivoted and said, boy, we're really not solving track and trace here. We're solving a very different problem. It was a very important pivot in our mind. You know, we said, we're trying to uh, connect everything to everything. And that led to the Internet of Things. Uh, so, so that's how I got into it. And, and after that, there's been a series of things where, because it was early days, got into standards bodies to set up standards. Uh, in fact, in the early part of uh, this journey was 802.11b was just getting created. And I was part of that 802. You know, if you remember the, you know, the early days of 802.11b and all of that, IEEE standards. And so been through all these uh, very interesting phases of technology evolution. Uh, but we, we thought IoT would come much faster than it did. <laughs> because I think we were, we were too optimistic, if you will, about how quickly you know, technology could come. But, but finally, I think we are seeing tremendous explosion. We never, ever thought uh, that could lead to, you know, billions of people talking and exchanging messages the way we do today. Uh, it's so seamlessly and, and it's, it's just changed everything in everybody's life. So I've been really blessed to be part of those early days. Uh, so let's update that with uh, specific sort of use cases and things that we're seeing and then we'll project into the future. So let's talk about the importance and the impact of automation and data analytics, but all really seamlessly underpinned by, you know, the internet of things. And this dream you had originally, <laughs> you know, like we still don't have it, right? Like a cabinet that's automatically filled, things oh, yeah. like that. So, and I guess it's regulatory issues and there, you know, things, it, and uh, silos that aren't uh, sort of interconnected in some way. Yes, yes. So uh, where are we today in all of this? And can you give some examples? Yeah, so I think we still have some ways to go. Um, uh, but you mentioned about AI. I'm sure we're going to talk a little more about that. See, see I took a, another pivot from... The, the old IoT thinking and started looking at enterprises, right, if you will, companies and large enterprises and what kind of problems do they have and started seeing that uh, you mentioned about silos and connections. So while IoT was about connecting everything to everything in, in a much more larger uh, ecosystem, if you will, uh, we uh, you know, I, I, we started seeing, you know, I joined Infosys and then later, you know, been a founding member of Edgeverb. And when we founded Edgeverb, we saw that there was a tremendous opportunity to solve certain issues that companies face, right? Enterprises face, which was around, uh, they still were very siloed, that in, invested in huge amount of money, billions and billions of dollars in ERP systems. And, 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 and everything was around, you know, did you get your, the right standard operating procedure, you know? So, so it was one of those days, right? You got your SOPs together, then you probably made it, you know? Um, and, and, but anyway, ERPs, while had its own wave of, you know, value creation, uh, came with its own set of baggages, right? And, and like everything that we introduced has its own pros and cons. And so did the ERP systems and, and, and it, it, while it solved the standard operating procedures and brought best practices from industries and so on, it also created a huge amount of silos, data silos, functional silos, process silos, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and, and, and that's where I said, oh boy, you know, while we were trying to connect things to things, I think we can also do well connecting processes, and systems, and tasks, and humans in enterprises. So, so, so that got me on a very different journey, you know, which is around, you know, how can we really bring the similar kind of thinking in the context of enterprises? And that's where automation comes in. And, and we said, you know, the, the idea was, you know, having invested billions of dollars in digitization, uh, you know, let's face it, even today, mainframe systems are still around. So I'm sure ERP systems are going to be there for quite some time to come. All right. So we said, but still the world 
need a different way in which they can interact with enterprises and enterprises needs a very different structure to engage with their current set of consumers and customers. And they need a very different layer of technology to integrate with their value chain partners, et cetera. So we said, okay, why don't we conceptualize a layer on top of these enterprise applications, which truly will transform these companies to become a connected enterprise, right? So that's really the business Stephen Edgeworth is in. And in that context, if I were to pick some examples, uh, you know, I can talk about Philips, where, you know, we deployed this platform at Edgeworth, which uh, they were actually the first company, if I'm not wrong, to deliver a million plus man hours of savings in just one function, which was in their finance function. Uh, so, but that was really just one part of it. Saving man hours was one, but later, you know, they, you know, we saw that tremendous improvement in operational metrics, whether it is in collections or dunning process, et cetera. So, so that's one example, which is more internally focused uh, financial processes where they had seven plus large SAP systems, which were not necessarily talking to each other. And there were all kinds of data issues, right? If you have data issues, forget about it. There's very little you can do. Uh, so, so, so that was one such example. The other one is uh, British Telecom, uh, where we deployed the same automation platform to drive a very high order of engagement with their customers. So it really was deployed in their customer service and customer operations area. So thousands of agents actually leverage this to um, provide a higher order of experience to their customers. So improvement in average handling time, and more importantly, they've seen improvement in the, the net promoter score. So, so, so that's another uh, interesting application. And, and I can go on, there are multiple other instances. One more, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stop right there, is what we've done with Mars, the, 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 the food company. Um, where you know they had challenged getting visibility into their entire value chain and managing uh, product recalls and putting products on hold, you know, and 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 they've leveraged the same platform to basically drive a very high order of data integration, data harmonization across the entire value chain, and then I'll have hundred percent visibility of all inventory across their value chain, and uh, with a click of a button they can stop a palletized load, doesn't matter where it is in their entire value chain downstream. It's tremendous power that's created. And all of this is automation. And then you talk about automation, it can be data related, it can be human related, et cetera. And automation has different contexts. In this. So you're giving us the state of the art in terms of automation and, and uh, you know some of the issues and then how to make it seamless and there's cost savings and efficiencies and of course competitive advantage as soon as you are able to do this uh, digital transformations and we hear these terms all the time right digital transformation things like that and of course you have to make it very secure and the, in fact security is such a big issue today it's at the board level right it could, it could hit reputationally a company if you don't address uh, those kinds of issues let's now move the needle a little bit into the future then so and now let's bring in AI. Uh, you, you, you know, all of us have seen this explosion in what they call foundation models, right? Where, or generative AI or large language models, fusion models, and you, and then you saw OpenAI come up with uh, ChatGPT, and everybody started using it. The Microsoft mm -hmm. started embedding it. What are your thoughts on foundation models like this, and what do you think its impact is going to be? Uh, and it, because AI is part of everything you do, which is type okay. automation and digital analytics and yeah, yeah. evidence secure digital transformation. Your thoughts on all of this AI explosion that's happening right now? <laughs> uh, in fact, Stephen, I think we spoke four months ago, and that looks ages compared <laughs> to what's happened in the context of AI in the last four months. Um, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> See, as a company, we've always believed in the, the potential of AI as a, as a catalyst <clears throat> to bring good to society. And <clears throat> in that context, you know, we've invested. In fact, Edgeware and Infosys, uh, I believe, was the first company to invest in open AI 
<laughs> this was in 2015, if I'm not right. Uh, I'm wrong, sorry, uh, 2015, I think, yeah. Uh, it, it was a non-profit trust. And we invested a certain amount of money to, 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 uh, to, to drive uh, this innovation, to help uh, engage in this innovation. And then I think um, uh, Amazon probably came a little later. Uh, into that mix. So we've been, you know, part of this open AI, if you will, <clears throat> uh, journey in our own way. Um, um, and in 2019, we put out a paper, in, uh, in fact, some, something that I authored, it's called as Automation Singularity. And I was, uh, and I was actually traveling around the world in many major cities, giving talks around this whole concept of automation singularity, uh, not to scare anybody, but to really wake up people to the potential of uh, how AI could transform automation into a possible singularity um, as in, in the context of elevating human potential, right, and human performance. Um, and we also spoke in that paper, you know, I wrote about you know, the five levels in which, you know, this whole automation can, it can drive, you know, all the way from basic automation to automating uh, and augmenting human thinking. I said, you know, this is a continuum and we will go through this continuum. We said, spoke about, you know, just automating using structured data to everything semi and unstructured, everything else is gonna be automated eventually and also spoke about you know how the the level one of automation singularity journey is going to be small uh, uh, reallocation of workforce in an enterprise to the eventuality of mass you know movement of skills and workers and so on so so that was the whole automation singularity uh, theme if you will and I, I as you can imagine in 2019 I was just pounded with a zillion questions around this and I said you know in fact many people thought I was kind of crazy talking about this. And uh, many people, uh, obviously a lot of people disagreed uh, with this thought. And I said, you know, and, and, and I was, so we've been, and I've been following about the whole transformer and models and large language models and the potential and possibilities was always out there. The question was time. So when I was talking about automation singularity, I'd say, I, 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 I was pretty convinced this was going to happen, but I didn't know when. So people used to ask me, well, tell us when. <laughs> and I used to say, maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years. <laughs> and that was, that was just four years ago, Stephen. Right. Now, I, I was so flat out wrong on, on the prediction of time. It's accelerated like crazy right now. And, and, uh, and I think, I think, uh, you know what large language models can do is and the power of this is incredible uh in fact i was even though i was relatively close to this i was quite shocked when it all came out i have to be really honest i was actually shocked to see what it really really can accomplish even and this is we're talking about still very early avatars of llms right these are like the early ones so I was like, oh my God. Um, so, so, and then anyway, there, there are many proof points, right? Of how, you know, if you look at even protein large language models in the drug discovery process, have already created tremendous value, you know, in, 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 in not only accelerating that discovery process, but, you know, maybe even bringing down the cost and hopefully you know, the cost of drugs will come down, maybe the, for some greater good. You know, these are all good possibilities. And, uh, and, and similarly, I think we have started seeing applications of this. And uh, the disruption of this, uh, I believe, is going to be very far reaching. Um, but, but, but I got also very concerned. And I, when I, that's why I said, you know, I was shocked to see what was really possible. I became very concerned on how it could potentially be exploited for wrong reasons. Um, so, so I think that's 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 the dichotomy right now. You know, 
yes, there is tremendous opportunity. And, and then the train has left the station. I don't, you know, the, the genie's out of the bag. You can't put it back in. It's over. And we have to embrace it and shape it in, 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 a, in a very responsible manner. Uh, I think that's everybody's responsibility and all companies that are working in this, people who are very close to technology, I think each one have to take that responsibility to shape it the right way, uh, put the right kind of governance around it. And, uh, uh, easier said than done. Uh, but, you know, now, you know, maybe hindsight, we can think, and you know, maybe some companies, even though had it, were hesitant to put it up. Maybe there was a reason, um, <laughs> you know, but now it's out, you know, now the race has begun. Uh, but it, so we have to wait and see, uh, Stephen, how this will all now shape up in a very responsible manner. Because I, I don't think there's any doubt about the potential and the cap what this technology can do. I think that's a foregone conclusion. Now, I think the shift is really about how do we do this very responsibly. And, and I think that's where, and, and, and we as a company also have a role to play, you know, to guide enterprises. Uh, to figure out how do they embrace uh, this capability because uh, this is something that I don't think any any company can ignore. I don't think they can sit on the sideline and watch. They all have to jump in, but do it in a responsible manner. So that's what we're trying to do, Stephen, is to figure out how do we uh, advise, guide, and help shape their, if you will, intelligent automation journey, if I can use the word intelligent automation. Um, you know, where LLMs become very important. You know, you already have open source LLMs, but I think truly enterprise intelligent automation is going to be shaped not by open source LLM, but truly their enterprise LLMs, which is very contextual to them. An LLM for, as an example, company A marketing, company A's customer service. So that's, I think, where really true value is going to un get unleashed. And to if, if that is really the North Star, so the question is, how can enterprises really set the foundational building blocks? And what are those? Uh, technology and process and compliance and all of them put together, and how do they shape that journey? So that I think uh, it, it's going to be undoubtedly very interesting. You know, there's, there's always something interesting, but this is by far the most interesting uh, thing, thing that's come across you know, we, we always were talking about everything from, you know, mechanized uh, uh, looms to microchips, what it can do. Now, AI is out there, I think. Uh, uh, you know, energy obviously is a huge concern, you know, and how do you really do this in a very, when I say responsible way, it's responsible in, in, you know, in, in many man ways, right? There are many dimensions to it, including the, the context of energy and, and constraints around that. So uh, Satish, I'm just gonna do a, a time check because these these are unscripted and I just wanna make sure you still have some uh, roadway here or are you time constrained? No, I can, we can, we can go on another 30 minutes, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that gives a little bit of room. You know, so, you know, the world was surprised, right, in November when uh, ChatGPT came out. And and then the world was surprised when GPT-4 came out. It was so much better. <laughs> and then the world got surprised when Bing AI came out. And they and this understanding that Microsoft had been an investor. By our company, Infosys, has been an investor as well, right? So with an emphasis. And then, and then actually seeing the utility of it, where... In the shortest period of time, it went to 100 million users, right? Never, never, no other application has gone to 100 million users. And then, and then you see all of the discussion, like in school, because people can write essays with it and they can do experiments with it. And, and, and now there's this whole science almost of prompt engineering, right? Yeah. <laughs> how you ask, how you ask yeah. the large language models, then they can, they could be better. Yeah, and and the and the quantity of papers coming out. I, I mean, within your team, how do you keep up? It used to be maybe you know ten major papers a year or something like they're like dropping every day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think 
this is probably what we can really call as a buzz. It created so much buzz. Uh, and uh, I, I, I actually had one discussion, Stephen, earlier, where I was talking about, you know, let's imagine a world where the cost of intelligence keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and maybe zero. You know, I was like, okay, let's pause and ponder what, what would that look like? Now is that, maybe this is extreme thinking, but maybe it's okay to do some extreme thinking. <laughs> and, and the truth may lie somewhere in between. Uh, but you know, it's, it's all happening. So once, I think it's, you know, automation was always seen as doing, right? You know, it may be on manufacturing floors, maybe even users clicking on computer, and still doing, an act of doing. Now that's moved from active doing to active thinking. And that's a, a dramatic shift. And that's caught the imagination, I believe, of every single human being. And uh, that, I believe, is the reason why everybody has a view. Everybody has a point of view. And I think that everybody is justified to have a point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, you know, it's so hard, even technology-wise, to keep up. Uh, you know, applications-wise, to keep up, you know. And, and, and I see so many startups now all of a sudden yeah. claiming innovations on top of these LLMs, right? And now you're you know, saying, oh my God, you know what, what, what? First of all, we don't know what's the level of predictability and, 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 and consistency and truth behind some of the things that we're seeing in these LLMs, right? And, and they have their own quirks to it. And now people are innovating on top of it. And, and so I think, I think it's like the, the Wild West. That's how I feel it right now. So I think we are in that phase, Stephen. Maybe when we talk, maybe we speak a year from now, maybe some of the dust would have settled down. Uh, but it, now everybody is kicking and it's adding to the dust, if you will. Um, and as I said, rightfully, because there's tremendous curiosity because uh, the, the possibilities are, are so huge and the implications are so enormous. Uh, everybody from companies to governments to uh, everybody's curious. And, um, and, and, and then that's, so it's, it's very hard to keep track. You're absolutely right. Um, so, so I don't think there's any magic wand, uh, but you know, I, I personally try to keep, to a few maybe trusted sources that I can go to and um, and try to stay within the boundaries of that. Otherwise, then it's just near impossible. And hopefully, you know, even the others will get to the trusted sources at some point in time and, and some wetting would have happened, All right? Uh, but you're right, it's just just way too much out there. And, and I can tell you the kind of questions we're getting from our customers uh, range from basic, very basic thing of, like, what is this LLM? Uh, is it something that I should be thinking about? Or maybe just, you know, they have enough problems already, right, that they're dealing with. The question is, is this something that I should even invest my time today, tomorrow, or not worry about it, you know? So, um, and actually I was speaking in one conference in the US uh, recently, and I, I asked a show of hands, how many of you really have, um, how many of you have heard of the chat GPT? It was surprising at that time, not many, maybe 30% showed the rest 70 were, I was like, boy, you know, so, so it will, it, it's still making its way through the system. You know, people will finally come to know I, I'm sure that I'm talking two months ago. So now I'm sure all, it would be hundred percent show of hands. And, and I'm sure all of them are very curious. You know, if, if, if my mother knows about it, I'm sure the world knows about it. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you try it? Try things on it? Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been experimenting uh, from the early days when it came out in November. Uh, simple things and and just, you know, starting out with very simple Googling stuff that we've always done to far more sophisticated, um, uh, you know, uh, coding capabilities, you know, and, 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 uh, uh, now, you know, we're trying to see how we can leverage this to accelerate marketing campaigns and creating far more richer, more brilliant narratives. You know, it, you know it, it's almost, I think, um, Stephen, it's like a buddy. Yes. You know, you, it, choice is yours. You know, you can use what you want and ignore what you don't want. But it, it gives you just another viewpoint, right? I think if we keep that perspective in mind, it's just interesting, you know. It, it gives you certain data that you probably will not get anywhere else, right? And and what you want to do it with it is really your own call. Uh, so to that extent, yeah, I I am curious to 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 know what it has to say, and it's very it's 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 it's, it's intriguing the kind of things it comes up with, and and the knowledge base it has, and it's um, it amazes me always. Yeah, you can see why Microsoft calls it a co-pilot, right? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> and as a company, we are, in fact, obviously, you know, we're you know we're closely working with Microsoft and collaborating with our customers along with Microsoft, and we are also leveraging some of this uh, to drive tremendous um, uh, gains internally in our own company. Uh, all that, yeah. You know, I, I was tracking this thing called Auto GDP, uh, GPT, right? And and it just on GitHub, you know, it's just like they, there's this uh, popularity thing that I think it went to like to over a hundred thousand, like the fastest ever, or something like that, right? And and you can download it, and then and then install it, and then uh, you can try these things, and you know, you have to get an open a, uh, open AI API uh, um, license, I guess, and but there's there's actually a free site where you can try it, and then if you do too much compute, then they say you're going to go to OpenAI and you're going to have to get one of their their licenses or capabilities so that uh, and then you're going to have to pay right. But uh, because it's a free site and they <laughs> can't afford to, to you know to host all of your experiments, and I've been following it and I tried it and I was I was shocked. Mm. But, Ooh. Have you looked at Auto GT? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, oh yes, and I, I mean, how much time? Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely, and then you know, and, and again, Stephen, we're really we're talking early. <laughs> I know early this is like this. few months in. <laughs> just few months in, exactly, and so I, I think. Um, and yeah, as a technologist, I'm I'm tremendously curious about <laughs> how and why and how wonderfully this, this technology has evolved and, and some of the forefathers of AI believed that this day would come, you know, uh, a long, long, much long before any of us even could understand this. Uh, and we are now really standing on their shoulders to look beyond but I think I think it's really now for us to shape this thing. It 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 it's so disruptive. <laughs> it is uh, for sure. You know, you know, you know. You've seen that Goldman Sachs report, right? Which said what some three hundred or four hundred million jobs in the in the developed market is going to get him impacted and, and this they're not talking some minimalistic impact you know complete displacement um, across a whole set of different domains and human capabilities and uh, still remember a friend of mine uh, Craig Leclerc from Forrester he was, to, he was talking about this was again 2018-19 he was talking about how the world would be very different because of automation and he was talking about how the cubicle workers world would transform. Now he called it as cubicle worker. Um, but you know, it's 
the, 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 the emergence of generative AI has now changed every paradigm of thinking that we've done before. Um, and uh, 300, 400 million jobs now getting displaced. And, um, you know, once human creativity, which is so, so innate to us, we thought we were the sole owners of that. I, I don't believe, right? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure anybody thought, you know, one could be more creative than us. I, we thought we were the best creation of God when it came to creativity. Right? There is nature and we're part of nature. Now, all of a sudden, you see this thing. And, uh, you know, what if very quickly it gets to a realm of realizing who it is and what it is and starts sketching its own journey? And that's why I think because it's moving so fast, it's so important to really, I don't know, take a pause, but definitely be extremely cautious uh, about how to deploy, where to deploy, what to use, what not to use. Uh, so, so yeah, so, so this, these are times where both the, the, the promise and perils of a technology are really out there, right? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta really exploit the promise and well, manage the perils of this. I think, I think it's truly the, the time to test these two words now. Yeah. and, and, and... And I just want to mention, if people watch the open source community, they're innovating even quicker, right? I mean, it, with Hugging Face, if you look at that, or the Langchain uh, work that's out there, I mean, just incredible. Or this thing like uh, Lambda gets leaked, and then Alpaca, and then there's Vicuna. I mean, these are small models that can perform yeah. almost as much as these huge ones. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just My God. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... And I believe it was in Hollywood, right? The writers, script writers, I believe. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. I, 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 obviously, you know, you can imagine the deluge of so much of news out there, but something, you know, I, I, if I recall, you know, they, they were concerned. <laughs> exactly. and I believe they're trying to rewrite their contract, uh, which says for the first time they're introducing this thing called AI. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I think it is. It's now uh, big enough and uh, material enough that I think every single profession will now take this very seriously and and try to see. Okay, what would our profession look like with this? I don't think it's going to be without this. It's going to be with this. And so, how can we really <laughs> write? See, augmentation is still okay. <laughs> That's about what I always spoke about. It's about human augmentation, right? Co-pilot is okay, <laughs> <laughs> right? Augmentation is okay. Co-pilot is okay. But what we're seeing is so much different than augmentation. It's not just augmenting. And it is really not just a buddy. It's much more than that. And that's concerning to many professions. You know, it's interesting. I was invited to do an a AMA about a week and a half ago uh, to Avanon. <laughs> uh -huh. It was like, it, you know, uh, Avanon, a uh, global kind of idea. Yes. Yeah. And and I said, I'll talk about AI. And and, and it was, it was an a, 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 AMA, it's an Ask Me Anything uh, fireside, right? They asked me for a keynote and I said, let's just do an AMA. The questions that were coming in, I was shocked. <laughs> And uh, I was shocked that, uh, and so I, I, you know, it's a Microsoft shop. So I said, you got to go to build. <laughs> you, gotta, you, you cannot ignore build coming up. I said, you've got to play with Bing AI. You, you, mm. you, you cannot ignore it. Yes. Right? Because you're a service guy. You better know what where every, everybody, you can't ignore it. And of course, you have to have safeguards and guardrails and do it in a thoughtful way, <clears throat> be careful and, and mindful and so on, but you can't ignore it. Right? Yes. No, absolutely. I think I, I, it is, it is um, it's not just humans. I think it is, um, you know, disruptive 
to existence of certain companies, certain businesses. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, and I think I think businesses will have to look at what their future business model will really look like. Right, and I, so I think so. It's not just well. I don't know if the Goldman Sachs report really spoke about this, but you know, well, they spoke about three and four million jobs getting displaced. I think the structure of businesses itself will potentially change and why we exist. You know, what's our purpose? I think everybody, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I, 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 in fact, I'm surprised I'm talking about this. And I think, but it's, I think, I think it's, it's a, it's a time when certain kind of companies will have to think, what's my purpose now? True. All right. Yeah. And it is it is it is so deep and so broad mm -hmm. and has such implications. Um, um you know, while you know we all talk about safety, guardrails, and this and that, it's tough. It's uh, harder, it's difficult to put them together. It's gonna to be interesting how the governments react to this. You know, in fact, I am also part of the uh, a forum here for which, which is um, uh, AI uh, forum in India. You know, it's interesting. You know how these conversations go on. You know how can countries react to this? How can governments react to this? Right? What should they really do? Should they do at all anything? And if so, what? Um, you know, you know, you know, should we own something? Um, you know. You know, the questions, I have been in a few forums and different uh, other geos asking similar questions where, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's while I spoke about company and purpose, you know, on the other side, there's a geopolitical implication as well to this. You know, is this, will, will this have any implication in terms of our cultural identity? You know, it's, it's, when those questions came up, it's like, oh my God, you know, you, you don't, this is you, right. We'll build this in because if this becomes such a big influence, that's going to shape thinking and 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 shape future of not people, not just people, but many other elements of how we as a society are organized today. Then, will it have at some level a cultural implication? Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's, um, it, I don't know if we've had a technology of this kind before, Stephen. I, I may be wrong, but I'm sure you've seen it much, much longer than I have. But I, it, I would be hard pressed to come up with another one which parallels anything like this. Yeah, it's definitely an inflection point. And, and, and I, and you saw Jeff Hitton come out, right? Not that long ago. Yeah. And I've been following each one of his speeches, and there's and there's different elements that he's adding each time. And, yes, isn't it? And it's thoughtful, but he's concerned too. <laughs> isn't it? And very... it's, it's a it's a big point in us, right, in our history. Absolutely, absolutely, and yeah, I think there was a <laughs> recently there was a New York Times article as well for him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, he's been adding more to it, but it'll be interesting to see how, I think people like him and others uh, who genuinely want to shape this uh, as a safe, uh, uh, you know, the benefits are enormous. There's, let's not, I think, play it down. Yeah, it's a lot, about, of lot of benefits, tremendous benefits. The question is, how can you really deploy this for greater good? Yeah. <laughs> Right. There was the there was the other question of will this make the rich more richer and the poor more poor? <laughs> right. And 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 there was also another model which was about okay, you know, it, it, will, will, will will this be one of those technologies that actually bring this thought of common minimum wage program back on the table at a global level? Right. So you know, it, all kinds of very radical thoughts. Yeah, that's you, you know, universal guaranteed income idea, right? Yeah, you, exactly, exactly, <laughs> right. So it's very, um, it's it's um, it's interesting, but uh, times to watch out, stay close to it. Um, but I think all of us have responsibility in our own way, however small it may be, to to be a voice for good. Well. Well, the thing though, Satish, you're in the perfect position. You, you know, you've got this tremendous background in automation and AI and Internet of Things, and you, 
you're the CEO, you know, one of the top companies in this area where you're doing secure, meaningful, thoughtful, uh, efficient, uh, uh, you know, and and um, amplifying in many ways all of the positives of secure digital transformations where you're combining impactful AI and automation data and analytics and you're doing for enterprises across things like finance and retail and manufacturing and healthcare. So you're in the middle of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there. I'm 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 right where um um you know I, I can be an influencer. <laughs> what you are, one, an influencer. Or, <laughs> one or more ways, right? Um. So and again, you know, it's one of those. I I can see. You know, this, this it's almost like you know the 2000 the burst of IoT. You know, there's <laughs> so many possibilities we imagine. You know. And, um, and 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 we were so thrilled when our technology was first deployed in Iraq war, you know. That's where it was first deployed, by the way, you know. Um, and DOD Defense Department jumped in and, and, and they were very curious about this thing. They said, what is this thing? What are you guys talking about? And 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 they said, you know, let's do a complete field test of this. And 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 exploded into something big, much, much bigger after that. And then, um, and now I think we're seeing now this wave, um, this is huge. I think it's almost like a tsunami. It's, it's not it's, a wave, it is. <laughs> it's right. And you're right, I think, I think I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm so, uh, you know, uh, as I said, blessed to be part of some of these, you know, changes. And hopefully we'll be able to do my own uh, little thing to shape it. Well, you're part of this AI uh, community, uh, sort of this leadership community. You're, you're, you have one of the top companies in the world in this space. You're an you're, you're, uh, innovator and for a long time innovator and you have set standards in this space. And, and you have your, uh, the continent of India roots where where India you're you're surpassing as as a country China <laughs> in population so and and uh, uh, if you look at the top uh, CEOs of these uh, companies they got, they have uh, Indian roots <laughs> so I mean uh, there's so much innovation and talent coming from your region right and but you're a global company. And so what does that mean for the world? <laughs> That's my next question, and I'll give the recommendations of, of uh, your recommendations to the audience. But you're, you're really, you're, I mean, um, I'm an investor, and I'm, I'm a, I say, you know, an Indian's a good target today. And I say, I mentioned Africa, too. So, <laughs> so, so you know. Yeah, see, I think, um, see, there are a lot of things that, uh, that can be done in this geo it can be a springboard for uh, the rest of the world uh, because you know you have a, there's a lot of diversity here right and then diversity uh, has its own strength <laughs> and it's important to cherish diversity and as a civilization this country has always cherished diversity and that has its strength and even when you look at technology or AI and so on and so forth, I think diversity help will definitely help shape this far more grounded, if you will, more grounded, right? I think that's that's one. And I think, you know, the scale is <laughs> how it's become the largest, the most populous country, yeah. right, in the world. And, and, and anything we talk here is in hundreds of millions, if not billions. And uh, and that uh, that also has its own you know uh, advantages, right? Because from the get go, you're not thinking of anything small. You're straight away thinking something big, right? <laughs> it has to really work. It has to work at scale, right? And that has its own advantages, right? That mindset approach to build something that is resilient, build something that is scalable. And the the diversity has its own uh, magic in powering innovation, right? I think I think all of this uh, I, I see as a good catalyst 
and the technology foundation that exists in, in this part of the world, uh, coupled with a little bit of uh, English know-how, if you will. All right, <laughs> all of that. I think it's gonna it, it makes the, uh, this an interesting place to work out for the next five to ten years, and uh, a lot of interesting people taking risks, trying new things. Yeah. Uh, you know, like everything else, some will succeed and fail, but I'm sure some of them will be uh, some some path breaking innovation. I'm sure will come from this 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 area. So Satish, and this is the very last question, and we only have a few minutes left. And that is, you know, what are your final recommendations to our audience? <laughs> well, uh, uh, that's a that's the most difficult question of all, Stephen. Um, you know, I think you know you started with uh, you spoke about some young audience, and and, and I'm not sure I've achieved <laughs> enough to really advise anyone. Uh, Stephen, uh, but if if I can use, just use this opportunity, I would always say, and I say this to every new hire who comes to our company, is to say, I tell them, be curious, you know, stay curious at all points in time. Uh, don't don't ever don't ever fear failure. Uh, um, be very curious, you know, and uh, and embrace change, you know, embrace it. And because you can only shape your future if you embrace the change and you can never stand in the way of the change and nothing good comes out of it right so so these are the things that i always keep talking to youngsters who, who walk into our own company and say if you do these things you know the rest you don't have to worry because if you have the right work culture and environment it'll all shape itself out um, and um, and and we've spoken enough about automation and, and ai and uh, you know, I as I said, you know, I, I I I truly believe this is one of those inflection points in in both in terms of technology, in terms of humans, in terms of companies, in terms of largely a society that's going to have very large implication. Um, it's unfolding at a very fast fast pace. Um, so I think it's important to. Be stay close to it. You know, some may be relevant. There'll be a lot of noise, as you said, even that'll come out. But uh, but 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 there will be some which are really material uh, and will make a difference. Uh, so it's, I think it's important for everybody and every company to be invested in this space uh, because this this is is going to be, I think, a game changer uh, at all levels. Uh, and um, and 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 it is for really you know the government to really also put their arms around it and figure out how do you really do this in a very uh, in a safe ethical manner and it's not easy you know we we were dealing with data privacy you know that's a big thing but look at this my god this is this is so different this is a very different different playing field altogether all right and and i think uh, it's all coming together right now and this is really this is a convergence of so many things, I think, in my view. Um, so it's interesting times. But thank you very much for uh, providing me this opportunity to speak to you, Stephen. I truly appreciate it and uh, love this uh, time spent with you. Thank you again, Satish. And you, you do live. Uh, you're the epitome of, of uh, embracing change and curiosity. So. <laughs> and impact. You have really great positive impact to the globe. So thank you again for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.